We're here at Pandora Park for this BBC matchup, big BBC matchup, the title implications in this matchup tonight as Pandora Gilboa hosting Liberty Benton. Glad to bring you this action here on WOSN. Patrick Gambler, Darren Gilbert here with you. And uh, as we mentioned, BBC title implications on the line. The winner of this one doesn't have it in the bag yet, but certainly in Pandora Gilboa's case, if they win tonight, they've got the inside track. They've got two victories over Liberty Benton then and Macomb for the Eagles. Uh, they still have to deal with Macomb at the end of the season, but this match will go a long way to determining the BBC title. Well, you've heard the expression, keeping a secret. It's no secret to anybody in the BBC or any coach or any fan sitting in the stands or sitting at home. This is this is by far the game of the week in the area. And uh, like you said, Pandora already having a previous victory over Macomb earlier this season. Uh, at Macomb, they've got the leg up, and this is a big one for both ball clubs because a victory here is going to put them one leg up for a conference championship. Going to have also computer point implications as well. Pandora Gilboa, well, really both teams will be able to score a lot of points, uh, maybe even more so with Pandora Gilboa's case, playing, uh, being in Division 7, playing a Division 5 team that Liberty Benton is, and they're going to get the uh, second, quite a bit of second level points if they can get a victory here tonight, but we have 48 minutes to decide that. Go, uh, go ahead. Well, that's just a great point on, that you're talking about the computer points because you know what, with 16 teams, the more points you can gather, the more opportunities you're going to have if you can get into that upper echelon to possibly host one, maybe two home ball games. So Liberty Benton, uh, Liberty Benton receives the uh, what looked to be an onside kick possibility, like they tried that out. So the Eagles will start on offense, and this is the Eagles offense that has had no problems putting up points. They've scored 42 points in each of their last three games here as Mason Maud under center. Handing it off there to number 20, Zach Elkert. Elkert doing the bulk of the carrying this season. He picks up three yards on the first carry. Appeared to be brought down by Lucas Decker. With the help of Lane Lee. So it picks up a gain of three there. That'll bring up second down and seven. Maud, the also one of those quarterbacks that uh, does well running as well. We're probably going to see that here a couple times uh, throughout this game, certainly. Now here on second down, Elkert the handoff again, and this time the Pandora Gilboa team in the backfield for a tackle for loss. Looks like Dalton Durst was in there on the stop for the Rockets. Yeah, earlier this year when they matched up with McComb, the game was won in the trenches, and Pandora Gilboa did a great job from defensive end the defensive end controlling the line of scrimmage defensively and then really did a good job offensively controlling the line of scrimmage also. Maud in the gun with Elkert with him, third down. And screen pass to Elkert on third to Manuel. And nice tackle getting back in there was number 11, Lane Lee. And that is going to stop the Liberty Benton first drive cold, three and out for the Rockets. Yeah, when that play early, early developed, they got the ball out into the flat, and he had some open area, but like you said, Lane Lee did a great job pursuing that football, making the open field tackle. Nice play by that young man. So now the Eagles will punt. And it will take a nice roll and go all the way down to the four yard line where Liberty Benton will down it, and I'll tell you what, a Defense that didn't need a lot of help in terms of playing field position uh, seems to be these Liberty Benton Eagles as of late. They have not allowed a point in three games. We mentioned them scoring 42 points. Their last three games have been 42 to nothing, 42 to nothing, 42 to nothing. Not a fan if wow. you're a scoregami guy, but a fan if you're a general Liberty Benton yeah, fan. You got to like the numbers four and two, huh? Along with the zero. Excellent punt right there. You know, going to pin Pandora back inside their five yard line to start their first possession. So the Rockets will try and bring it out from there. And if it wasn't completely cloudy, I'd say the shadow of their own goalpost. But they're back there, ball on the four. Corey Girton, the quarterback for the Rockets. 1,629 yards passing, 19 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. 
Yeah, that night against McComb, he came out and threw an interception on his first play, and then after that, he was just absolutely dynamite uh, throwing the football. I believe he threw for four touchdowns that night. And uh, we've got a delay here in the game. I don't exactly know why. The official is standing there between the two teams. Liberty Benton allowed to huddle. It's almost like they're they looking at the clouds, and it appears to be it to the west. I'm not quite sure if they had saw something in the distance or That is entirely what? possible. And, uh, of course, as, these, as we have the uh, possibility of inclement weather tonight, there could be a possibility of uh, if you see lightning, um, that's going to stop the game for a period. Okay. Okay, the play clock. Okay, so the play clock is not working as the... PA announcer said, but that is a good point to mention because as we mentioned, there is rain that is uh, forecasted, yeah, and uh, that could slow things down. Won't necessarily slow down the broadcast tonight. We will just, due to the magic of television, edit that out. We will get through it. We will. Let's, of course, Megan Cherick, who will edit this together back at the station, wants you to enjoy the rain, in which case... Uh, it might be some uh, ASMR for you. I don't know. Hey, as long as it doesn't have little white pellets, I don't care. <laughs> That's coming and coming soon enough. Uh, yeah. Hopefully we'll be in basketball uh, season yes. by then. And those are all indoors, so we're okay. Yes. All right, here we go. PG's first drive. 10-10 left in the first quarter. Ball in the four, first and 10. And the handoff going to get a started working out that far side. And Ben Burkholder carrying the football for the Rockets, the fullback. Young man's coming in averaging just under 50 yards per game. Four rushing touchdowns between him and Andrew Miller. They're combined for 11 touchdowns rushing the football. So Andrew Miller, the leading ball carrier for this Rocket team, but they are not afraid to give it to Burkholder when the situation calls for it. And here's a nice move going out the far side. It's a foot race. Aiden Morris to the 40. A gang of Eagles behind him and finally tackled at the 34-yard line. That mark him out at the 32-yard line. What a carry by Aiden Morris, and that's going to be good for a Northwest Ohio recycling first down. Yeah, that was a heck of a bounce on the outside. He tried to go inside the right tackle and bounced into the outside. Finally brought down by C.J. Barbara. Not until he got to the 32-yard line. Big game there for the hometown Pandora Gilboa Rockets. And now four wide as after two plays, they are in plus territory. And here's the handoff to Andrew Miller. Miller across Miller the 30 to the 28-yard line. Nice pick up there. And Morris, who had been their leading receiver, I probably wasn't expecting him to just take the ball and run with it, and that's how they got this big play. Well, I'll tell you, he's really, really dangerous in the open field. And like you said, he's had 14 receptions for touchdowns, 47 catches. 14 of those have crossed the goal line. Second down and six. Here is Miller again, working off that left side. Finds it. Nice stiff arm across the 20 to the 16-yard line. Good for another Northwest Ohio recycling first down. And this is exactly the Pandora Gil Gilboa Rockets, the way they started out against McComb. They just put it on the ground and pounded it. You know, they had the early interception, went back to the running game, and right now they're being very successful on the ground. Eagles have not allowed a point since September 8th when they defeated Port Clinton 50 to 14. And Miller cuts through the middle. Nice truck across the 10 to the six yard line. Picks up nine on that play. Yeah, Seth Elker doesn't make the tackle there. That's gonna be a touchdown. The offensive line right now are winning the battle in the trenches, opening up huge holes. Second down one. For Mr. Miller to find his way. Second and short. Here's Gurton with the handoff. This is to Burkholder right through that same spot and into the end zone for a touchdown. So how about that? A 96-yard drive on five plays. And take that, not allowing a score in 12 quarters. Well, I tell you, they're just playing with so much confidence right now. 
You know, I watched them coming out before they broke their, their uh, what do I want to call it, their, uh, I don't want to say huddle? a mascot, but the thing they had there to break through at the beginning oh, of the I see, game. Oh, yeah, I at the beginning of the game. And yep. they weren't hooting and hollering. They were all business as well as Liberty Bend. We knew it was going to be a tough contest, and right now they're throwing the first punch. An excellent 96-yard drive put together by the Rockets, and that is rocket fuel for this Pandora Gilboa team. With 7.53 left in the first quarter, it's a 7-0 lead for the Rockets here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Sprunger Insurance with locations in Pandora and Bluffton. Go Rockets! Well, the Rockets just went 96 yards down the field on a five-play drive, and they have taken an early 7-0 lead on Liberty Benton. And I'll tell you what, uh, Darren Gilbert, the game could not have started much better for PG. Three and out on defense, and then a long drive for a touchdown on offense. Well, the game flipped. I mean, Liberty Benton had them back where they wanted them, you know, inside the five-yard line. Here's an attempted return on a little bit of a squib kick out to the 40-yard line as Anderson Roberts trying to return Roberts that one. And that is where Liberty Benton will start this next drive and obviously looking for uh, quite a bit more success than they had on their first drive. Yeah, I think Pandora is, you know, satisfied with just putting the thing, if they're, they're going to kick off to put it on the ground and not give Liberty Benton an opportunity to break one off on a kickoff return. Noah Davis and Roberts, the kick returners typically for Liberty Benton. And now here, first down, this is Maude with a carry. And he works off tackle and gets across the 50 to the 47-yard line. That's good for a Northwest Ohio recycling first down. So a play that Pandora Gilboa had success with, Liberty Benton, they did it too. Yeah, a little RPO action there. Great kick out block by the left tackle, Will Granger, to get him through that seam to break off that long run for the Eagles. So you're Pandora, you want to put, try to put Liberty Benton in second and third long situations. Eagles in plus territory. Now Maude back to pass. Pass is complete out to Seth Elkert. And push out of bounds around the 42 yard line. The 6'3", 185 pound sophomore with the catch. Yeah, did a good job with his footwork, catching that football and securing it tightly as Pandora gang tackled him out of bounds here near to the near side boundary. Ben Burkholder getting credit for that tackle. Make it second down and four. Ball in the 41, Mod in the shotgun and is gonna keep this one and finds a nice hole across the 35 to the 34 yard line. Good for a another Northwest Ohio recycling first down. Good job by that young man faking the handoff to Zach Elkert, keeping it, getting that first down. Elkert came into the contest, 467 yards on the ground and seven touchdowns. And one of the things that the PG defense will have to figure out through the course of the game is, all right, who's going to get the ball? I'm trying to diagnose that RPO that is uh, increasing in popularity. And here is Elkert again, working that left side out to the 15 and gets out to the 13-yard line before he is tackled, brought down by Aiden Morris. Brady Jolliffe on that left side of the offensive line, opening up a hole there, letting him to bounce outside. Penalty flag on the field, and we've got a holding call on the penalty flag, so that's going to wipe out a chunk of that play. Yeah, I didn't quite see who it was, but... Uh, one of the guys in the stripes did. So instead of being a, or close to a first down, oh, it's going to be first, down and 17. first and 17. Yeah, that's a big one right there. That negates a big run and also puts you back in first and long. So behind the chains is never where we want to be. And now here is Mod handoff. This is Elkert. Having some success on that side, gets out to the 31-yard line, so picks up 
a pretty good chunk of it before he is brought down. Looks like he picked up about eight or nine on that play. Yeah, that left side of Liberty Benton's doing a really good job hook blocking. They call that pushing their defender to the inside, allowing the outside to open up along with also Seth Elkin with a nice block. It's a nice game there on first down if you're an eagle. Got about half the yardage they needed. Now second down and eight. The ball on the 31. Mont fakes the handoff. Screen pass, gets that out to Morris. Or take that back, that is Seth Elkert. Elkert. And he's across the, close to the 15 yard line before, I'm sorry, the 25 yard line before he's tackled, down at the 26. Chase Meyer on the stop along oh, with teammate Ben Burkholder. You gotta believe this is two down territory if you're the Eagles. You would certainly think so. At least something that is crossed the mind of head coach Scott Garlock. Ball in the 26, third and three. Mason handoff is going to keep it instead, and he barrels across the 25 to the 20, and is going to get enough for a Northwest Ohio recycling first down. Good job using his upper body and his lower body first with his down. legs, driving his way to that first down. So that will move the chains, and it's red zone time for the Liberty Benton Eagles. 4.20 remaining here in the first quarter. Pandora Gilboa with a 7-0 lead on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard, but looking for more. And pressure in the backfield. Mod able to keep the ball, but Pandora Gilboa is all over it. Stopped for a loss at the 21-yard line. Yeah, that started with Landon Moore with his first penetration there actually had his hands around both the ball carrier and the quarterback. Good job by that young man blowing the play up, letting his teammates come in and clean it up. So a tackle for loss makes it second down and 11. Mod back to pass, cross the middle, pass is complete, spin move, and ball comes out. I think that's going to be on the ground. That's what the official is saying, so no fumble. Ball down at the two. This could be a Northwest Ohio recycling first down. And the catch made by, I believe, Braden Lemire, number 18 for Liberty Benton. Yeah, a little slant route, nice pitch and catch right there. Didn't quite get to the end zone. Didn't cough it up. They said he was down on the ground. With the and I think that's a good call, too. I think the, the, the ball slamming the ground is what had it pop up in the air so high. So now first and goal for the Eagles. Mod's going to keep this one, and looks like he's going to have enough for a touchdown. He does. So the Eagles strike back. Carson Meyer, you saw get in there. I thought he was going to get the stop behind the line, but Mod powers it in for a touchdown. It's 7-6 Pandora Gilboa. Yeah, he made the contact in plenty of time before he reached a the goal line, just that upper body strength and leaning, the upper body leaning over the goal line got him to the end zone. 60-yard drive for the Eagles. And now they will attempt to tie this one up at seven. Garrett Nealis to attempt the extra point. And it is up and good. 3.05 remaining in the first quarter. We are all tied up at seven here on WOSN. Welcome back. Today's Instant Replay is sponsored by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. 60-yard drive for Liberty Benton. Nice answer by the Eagles as they tie this one up at seven in the first quarter. Really good composure by the, the Eagles and their execution and their game plan right there. I mean, they marched it right down the field, you know, kept their composure and did the little things and got great interior blocking and played strong with the football and got it across the end line. So this one will go into the end zone, and the Rockets will start their next drive from the 20. It will be brought out to the 20-yard line, where it will be first down and 10, Pandora Gilboa. 
So while we're resetting here, did you know the WOSN Scores app is new and improved? If you have the old app, delete it. Forget you ever owned it. Get it off of your phone and then download the brand new app from your particular app store of choice so you don't miss any of your favorite team scores. The new WOSN app replaces the old app, so make sure you download it today and stay up to date on all the scores. Ball at the 21st and 10. Here's the handoff and right there, a couple of yards, and that is it. Stuck at the line there. Appeared to be Brady Berkemeyer. I was going to say, Brady Berkemeyer. Yeah, he met him right in the hole. Good job squaring him shoulders up. Nice fundamental tackle. Only a gain of one on the play. Second down and nine. And Gurton, pill action, drop back to pass and intercepted. Coming up across the middle is Seth Elkert for the first turnover of the game. Big play right there by the Eagles safety. Stepping in front of that vertical pass down the seam. Had the right idea, but he underthrew it. He's got to throw it over the top of that safety, but that was a great read by the safety there making that interception. Elkert skies for that one, comes up with the interception, and now Liberty Benton in business, in plus territory at the PG-40. Mod in an empty backfield, and is gonna keep it. Takes it up across the middle to the 30. Tackled at the 26 yard line, a flag comes out at the end of the play. Aiden Morris and on the stop along with number three, Isaac Stahl. Hold, but it looks like it's all going to come back. They call holding a Liberty Benton. That's a second one tonight. So it was, they threw the flag in the area of where it was going to be a first down. The ball comes back to the 38 yard line. So it's going to be about a, well, obviously a 10 yard penalty, but it's gonna make it first down in about eight. So yeah, you got a first down, but you're about <laughs> nine yards further yeah. back than where you started. Yep. I'm on the gun again. Let's see if this is a run, no, it's a pass. Quick pass gets it out to Elkert. Elkert stretching for additional yardage and Gets out to about the 33-yard line. Good job by Aiden Morris right there, grabbing him by the ankles, keeping him from breaking that tackle. Ball at the 34-yard line. Nice little pitch and catch out here to the flat to the near side. Down four. Spot the ball at the 34-yard line. If you come upon the final 90 seconds of this first quarter. Second down and four coming up. Five wide again, and this time Mott is going to keep it going up the middle and met a couple of yards down the field. Didn't get a ton on that one, a couple of yards. It's going to bring up a third down and short. Jake Fisher in on the stop. Big stop by that young man. Six foot, 230 pound senior. Good job shedding the block with his hands, making the tackle. So third down and one coming up for the Eagles. And this is Maude with another keeper and it looks like he's gonna have enough for the first down as he needed to get across the 30 yard line and he did. That's a Northwest Ohio recycling first down. Carson Meyer on the stop. Got just enough to get that first down. Both offensive lines have been doing what they needed to do so far tonight. It's been, Liberty Benton has had success when they've run the ball, and obviously Pandora Gilboa has had success when they've run the ball here as well. First and 10, four seconds left. They are gonna try and get another playoff. They will, Mod looking back to pass. Going end zone, has a man, and tries to bring it in with one hand, and couldn't do it, Zach Elkert the intended receiver on that play, and that is going to wrap up this first quarter.
All tied up at seven here from Pandora Park. Cody Benton and the Rockets. We head to the second here on WOSN. Welcome back, Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora. Sponsoring our first downs tonight, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Call 419-384-3392. Second quarter action ready to get started here from Pandora Park. All tied up at seven. Liberty Benton with the football. Mod back to pass. Screen is up. Ball tipped and incomplete. Pandora go bullet defense snuffing that one out very well as the pass fell. Harmlessly to the turf at the 32-yard line. Third yeah, that was up. harmlessly fell to the turf, and I'm telling you, that was real close to being an interception. Great job by Pandora defensively. You know, if you you got to like their chances now, putting them in a third and long situation. Let's see what uh, Mr. Mod's got up his sleeve here. All alone in the backfield, third and 10. Ball to 29. Mod back to pass, going across the middle. Elkert has him, brings it in, touchdown. Right down the seam on a vertical route. Found the big fella sprinting down between the hash marks for the touchdown. 29 yard touchdown strike. And Liberty Benton takes the lead, 13 to 7. Yeah, they opened that backfield up, went five wide. Found him streaking down the seam. Nice pitch and catch. Nealis up with the kick, and it is good. So 14 seconds go by here in the second quarter, and we have a 14-7 lead for Liberty Benton. We'll be back here on WOSN. Welcome back to today's premier community sponsor for the Liberty Benton Eagles is Stumps Fire Protection. Stumps Fire Protection is a well-established family-owned business serving throughout Ohio since 1993. Second quarter opens with Liberty Benton finishing their drive. 29-yard pass from Mason Mont to Zach Elkert giving the Eagles a 14-7 lead. Patrick Hamler, Darren Gerbert here with you. This BVC matchup, and it has been... Everything we expected so far, and you mentioned the break, that Mason Maud, man, he can throw a nice football. Yes, he can. You know, in games like this, you got to minimize your turnovers, and if you do get a turnover, you got to take advantage of it, and the LB did it in that lap, last possession. I'll be curious to see, you know, if that interception is going to rattle the young man, Mr. Gerken, or Ger Gerton, excuse me, or is he going to come out and just shake it off and just play his game? 5'10", sophomore, has been the starting quarterback for the Rockets. I think as a freshman, too, he started last year. I believe so. At least he had had some starts. Yeah, he played he played some quarterback last year. He came in with, with some experience. Not a ton, but he did have some. Here's a handoff on first down, and Liberty Benton all over it. Burkholder not able to find any space as LB snuffed that one out expertly. Yeah, it appeared to be Austin Collard with the stop. So a loss of two on that play brings up second down and 12. Ball to 25. Gurton in the backfield and a pitch handoff to Miller and Miller back to the original line of scrimmage, maybe even an additional half yard. And that's it, gonna bring up third and long. Birkenmeyer on the stop for the Eagles. Ball at the 28 yard line, third down nine. So the Rockets find themselves behind the sticks with a third and long. Ball on the 28. Gurdon back to pass, pressure coming, puts this one up and the pass is incomplete. Was intended for Chase Meyer and PG fans wanting a flag and not getting it. That was great coverage there by Liberty Benton. It'll be fourth down. 
Yeah, just a little bit too high on the throw. But pretty solid defense there. A little press coverage right there. And good job right there getting his hands up, not making contact with the receiver. Morris back to punt. Or from our vantage point, not making contact right, exactly. with the receiver. Exactly. As impartial uh, observers here, we didn't see at least enough contact to warrant a flag. And now the punt out to the 35 yard line. And field a nice stick at the 50 sure yard was. line. That stopped that one in a hurry. Mason Maud, the return man on that one. It's not very often you see the quarterback of the team also uh, fielding kicks and punts. But he's listed there, him along with Elkert. Take a lick like, there, like uh, that. that. Right, for sure. Chase Meyer on the stop along with Brock Stahl, number 14. Six foot senior for the Rockets. Ball in the 48 of Liberty Benton, first and 10 for the Eagles. And here is the handoff and PG getting the pressure and the penetration back there, getting the stop for a loss. Yeah, that's a nice TFL right there by Carson Meyer. Landon Moore's not going to get that thing put down as a tackle, but he blew the play up to start with, with yeah. his penetration and pressure, beating his man off the snap of the football. So there was no space back there really to work to get that play going. Now second and 13, Mod looking back, looking deep, has a man caught down the sideline and tackled at the 15-yard line as once again it is Seth Elkert. Just good old fashioned pitch and catch out there as we look at the Finley truck and RV instant replay. Yeah, that's one of them. You're just gonna let it go and let him run underneath it. Like you said, great pitch and catch. And now here is Elkert again getting the handoff and met at the 11 yard line as that previous play good for Northwest Ohio recycling first down. And a modest gain on this play will bring up second down and about seven. Appeared to be more Carson Meyer on the stop along with Jake Fisher. The Eagle offense is clicking. Handoff issues there and they'll just drop on top of it at the 21 yard line. Preserving the possession was Ashton Crawford. Appeared to be a double reverse. Boy, I'm telling you, if they make the exchange right there, guess who's wide open at the left pylon? Mr. Mod had nobody within 10, 15 yards of him. Kind of a modified Philly special. Ooh. <laughs> That's one of those you work on, you keep in the back of the playbook, or maybe two-thirds of the back of the playbook and go, hey, you know what, maybe we should try this out. Yeah, that's, that's one of them where you bite your teeth if you're a coach, you know. For sure. They're down in 15, and Matt Hershey's going to take a timeout. We'll take a timeout as well with 8.01 remaining in the first half to 14-7. Liberty Bet lead. The Eagles are looking for more here on WOSN. Back in after the timeout, third down and 15 coming up for Liberty Bend. Chance for PG to get a stop here. Here's Mod going across the middle and intercepted by the Rockets. Chase Meyer with the interception and he's taking it down to the 35 yard line, down to the 39 yard line. And a big play for this Rocket defense. That is something they desperately needed. Well, and I'll tell you what, Coach Hershey, give him and his staff credit because they changed it up. Their defense, the linebacker went out to the open area and they manned up. That, what a nice job right there. Right before the ball was snapped and I think it created a little confusion for Mason Mod. As this wind is really picking up, it's gonna be interesting as this game goes on about throwing the football. Andrew Miller with the 
handoff, and he is pushed backwards as able to get past the first guy, but the second, third, uh, through about the eighth, bring him down for uh, no gain on that play. And you're absolutely right, the wind is kicking up here at Pandora Park, and a number of people are scrambling to make sure nothing flies away. Yeah, Birkenmeyer was the one who initially made the stop right there on Miller, allowed his teammates to wrap him up and drop him for no gain. Trouble with the handoff there, and Gurton double pass, looking deep, and just out of his outstretched hands for Chase Meyer. And he had him open, too. Speaking of looking at plays from around the back of the playbook, that was an example of that there. Sure was. Third down and 10 from the 40. So that'll bring up third down and 10, the ball at the 40 yard line. And now an opportunity for the Eagles defense to get off the field and get the football back with about halfway of this second quarter to go. Gurton rolling to his left, in trouble, puts it up and pass incomplete. Looking for Aiden Morris on there and there are about three Liberty Benton Eagles there and we're gonna have a flag on the play. It's gonna be holding against PG as I imagine that will be declined. Yeah, that's a good call. I think they're gonna decline it and put PG in a position to punt the football. Yeah, that one very fortunate not to be picked off because he threw that into an area with three blue helmets. Yeah. So one of the Eagles might have even gotten a fingertip on it, it looked like, but even if that hadn't been the case, that would have been a very difficult pass for Meyer to bring down, or Morris, I think, to bring down. Yeah, I think the guy you were talking about are the players, Jason Worth, or excuse me, Jared Worth, my apologies. Mm. So fourth down and 10. Modden Elkert back to receive the punt for Liberty Benton, and this one is gonna take a PG roll and go out of bounds at the 10 yard line. So a nice punt. Penn's Liberty Benton deep, and now the Eagles have about 90 yards to go, and we'll see how this next session goes. Well, I would say the skies still look foreboding, but it's dark, so we can't see the skies anymore. No, but we can feel the breeze. <laughs> feel the breeze, yeah. Yeah, that temperature's dropped about 10 degrees in the last 10 minutes, or so it seems. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. Certainly feels like it, especially for the guy sitting here in a short sleeve shirt. <laughs> Handoff on first down. That one going out to Elkert. But is, aren't you the same guy that told me before the game started, oh, I'll go out after first quarter and I'll get my jacket. Or half time. Oh, I half said half time. time. Okay. Yeah, half time I'll go out and get my hoodie. Yeah. Okay. We'll see if you can break, I'm being, break a timed record right I'm here. Being, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. You guys can just keep the clock running. That'd be true. <laughs> Please don't say guilt. Just take over. I'll be back. Uh, no, no. Okay, good. We, we, we got this. Okay, good. 620 left in the first half. Second down and seven. Here's Maud with the keeper going off that left side again. Has enough for the Northwest Ohio Recycling first down out across the 20 to the 23-yard line. Yeah, it's been the mod show here in this first half, both with his legs and his passing ability. Both teams turning the football over through the air one time. The difference is Liberty converted on their touchdown. Pandora was forced to punt it away. Said Mod has certainly been that dual threat quarterback for the Eagles uh, this season, certainly, but definitely in this game. Now here's the handoff again, Elkert and a nice hit there around the 26-yard line. And that is where that play stops. And, and as we mentioned, offensive line's doing really well. And uh, Liberty Benton's offensive line just continues to make those holes for those guys to run through. There's some pretty big holes, too. Yeah, they're doing a really good job, you know, making those holes, allowing both the running backs and also, or also excuse me, Mr. Mott, allowing him to use his legs on that RPO. Second down and six. And Maude passes out to Seth Elkert. Elkert, a couple guys miss, slipping 
out across the 50 to the 45 and pushed out of bounds at the 43 yard line. A Northwest Ohio recycling first down for the Eagles. Really good job by Reed Irwin right there getting the block allowing him to break free down this near sideline before being pushed out of bounds here at about the 43 yard line. Goodness, they get the ball out into space, they're dangerous. Eagles in plus territory now, 521 left in the first half. Maud on the keeper going right up the middle across the 40 to the 37 yard line before he is tackled. Jake Fisher and a host of other Rockets in on the stop. Landon Moore along with Mr. Miller. Mr. Miller only a junior for Pandora at the linebacker spot, also running back. Do it all, second down and five. Here's Alcord again, and this time, getting in there behind the line for a stop is Carson Meyer. Another tackle for loss by that young man. Meyer, one of their leaders on the team in tackles for loss. Ben Burkholder came in with the most. I think Meyer had, uh, I think, six or seven. Uh, heading into this game as well. He picks up another one. Yeah, actually five coming in, but five. you're right. Okay, He's you. had two tonight. That gives him seven. Also 56 tackles, him and Burke Holder, mm -hmm. and Andrew Miller was 63. Third down and six. Coming up on four minutes left in this half. Maud rolling, passing, complete. Elkert at the 29-yard line and fighting for more before he is brought down at the 28-yard line. Good for Northwest Ohio Recycling first down. He yeah, definitely threaded the needle, thrown into a gusty Elkhart breeze the right there. Elkert with the reception. Meyer, the tackle. Had a tight window, but he got it in there, got enough for the first down. First and 10, 10, 10. So the wind is definitely coming out of the west. And that would be the wind that Liberty Benton is throwing pretty much into. So Maude on the keeper on a fresh set of downs and he's across the 25 to the 23 yard line. Yeah, if you're the blue and white, you gotta be satisfied on first down getting four, five and six yards at a pop. It makes that second down play a little bit easier in the playbook to call. And of course, you find yourself in a situation, and it obviously depends on how head coach Scar Scott Garlock wants to work this, but you've got 333, you're letting the clock go. You can really run this clock out as far down as you want. If you punch it in, you go into halftime with a 21 to seven lead and PG doesn't get a chance to answer. That's correct, that's a great point. And we're gonna have a timeout. timeout. I believe Liberty Benton calls timeout and we will take it as well. 321 remaining in the first half. It's a 14-7 Liberty Benton lead here on WOSN. Welcome back and you know we're standing you know, and we can sit here and laugh and giggle when the wind is blowing and it's dropped 10 degrees. Are we normal? <laughs> uh, <laughs> probably not. We, we, oh, were, we were told there was goodness. no hot chocolate. There's no access. Uh, there may be access to coffee. I don't know. I don't think either one of us are coffee drinkers. No. <laughs> we'll just have to I just put suffer for I our think art. I'd probably just put my fingers in it, quite <laughs> honestly. Second down and five. Here's Elkert. All the way. Clear. Touchdown. Well, you just got your answer. Zach Elkert right up the middle, 22 yards, and Liberty Benton has increased their lead to 20 to seven. We thought maybe the opportunity to wind down the clock, and I think that might have been the purpose of the play call, but you know, if the lane's open, you take the lane and you take the points. Well, when we get an offensive line that's opening up huge holes and getting five and six yards at a pop, that's a great job by the offensive line there, opening that hole up, letting him get to pay dirt. The kick is up. And it is good. 3.14 left in the first half. The 21 to 7 Eagles lead here on WOSN. Tonight's 
premier sponsor for Liberty Benton is Stumps Fire Protection. Stumps Fire Protection is a well-established family-owned business serving throughout Ohio since 1993. 21-7 lead for Liberty Benton, and we talked about the possibility the Eagles may be bleeding some more clock before they put the points on the board, but 22-yard touchdown run by Zach Elkert made that point moot, and now you've got Pandora Gilboa who, if they can in this half with a score, they get the ball to start the second half. I know we're getting a little ahead of ourselves, but that would be a, an ideal situation for the Rockets. Well, I think this is a huge possession for them to try to get some points, you know, going into halftime. The, the kick returned out to the 25 yard line, so that is where the Rockets will start their next drive with 3.08 left in the first half. Rockets have two timeouts remaining, so plenty of time. Well, and you got to believe they've got some wind to their backs, which is going to help them, you know, especially this last three minutes yeah. here in this second quarter. If you're going to throw it, this is the ideal time. Gurton with Miller and Burke Holder in the backfield. Burke Holder gets the ball and nowhere to go in the Eagles' pursuit coming from the opposite side and dropping him at the 25-yard line. No gain. Yeah, Brady Birkenmeyer right there blew the play up. Good job penetrating in the backfield. He didn't get the tackle, nor is it going to show up on the stat sheet, but he's the one that started it by slowing him down, allowing his teammates to mop up the play. So they'll give him a gain of one. This is second down and nine. Gurton with Miller in the backfield. Play action. Gurton lets it go, and the pass is incomplete. Overshot him. Pass He's tried to hook. Yeah, go ahead. I'm Isaac sorry. Stahl, I think. No, actually, it was Meyer. Carson Meyer, Meyer. Thank you. Thank you. Carson Meyer. Eights and threes look a little funny from up here That's sometimes. That's okay. All right. Yeah, so Carson Meyer was the intended receiver on that. And that, you know, something else to consider, too, is, you know, it's wind, and the wind's at your back. That also puts extra mustard on the ball. and might not necessarily be ready for that too. We might see some overthrows if they're yeah, trying to go long. I was going to say that sailed about 10 extra yards because of the wind. Third and nine. Gurton back to pass, has time, puts this one up. It's a rainbow shot, has a man, and incomplete. Was intended for Chase Meyer, number two. Pass defensed by Jared Worth, number 17 for Liberty Benton. And that is a three and out for Pandora Gilboa. That one hung up there a long time, didn't it? Yeah, it sure did. We said that one almost went high enough to bring rain, but we were already under threat of rain. We don't need that. Morris in punch formation. So fourth and nine, ball at the 26. Here's Morris to punt. And Oregon Boa has done a great job with punting, and that one ends up taking an eagle bounce, but right there to field that one and keep it from going any further is Pandora Gilboa. And it'll be at the 42-yard line, so an opportunity for Liberty Benton, depending on how they want to do this, to maybe put seven more points on the board before halftime. I think you got to take advantage of the situation, don't you, and, and see what happens here, well, knowing that you're going to come out defensively I mean, you've got over two minutes left. You've got two timeouts. It, I mean, you can run the clock down, certainly, but you would think with the implications that this game has, you want to try and distance yourself as much as you can. Here's Maude going deep once again. Pass incomplete. Looking for Lemire on that play. And almost had him, too. Coverage applied by Isaac Stahl. There, I got it right that time. You did. Second down. Yeah, they were look. They, they set it up with a fake on an inside bubble screen, and then went vertical down the right side here by the hash mark. Heck of an effort there. Just couldn't haul it in. Brings up second down, and Mod is going to keep it. Hesitates going up the middle and. About to the 45-yard line, and that's all. Nice tackle there by Jake Fisher. Big fella got his arms around him, brought him to the ground. 145 remaining. 
here in the first half, third and seven. Eagles with two timeouts remaining and a 21 to seven lead here on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard. Mod in the gun, quick pass, complete. Making some guys miss out across the 50 to the 48 yard line before Ashton Crawford is brought down. And that's going to be. Well, he's going to be close, partner. I think uh, he's going to call out the chains. I was going to say, based on where the uh, far side official is standing, it looks like the chain gang might come out for a visit. That's what they're going to do. They're going to bring out the chains. Indeed, they are. So they'll bring the chains out, and they'll take a measure of this one. And then say they're, they're fourth down. Is this a situation where you go for it? I think you go for it. I mean, their offensive line has been doing really well. They've gotten pretty much all the yardage they've needed. But we'll see if that's a moot point here or not. And well, he's plenty. Got yeah, he's got that by a football and a half, didn't he? He did indeed. Northwest Ohio Recycling first down for the Eagles. So fresh set of sticks for Liberty Benton with 113 left in the first half. Eagles still with both their timeouts. Official winds the clock. Ball on the 47, first and 10. Pass out to Elkert. Working around the sign, out to the 41 yard line before he's pushed out of bounds, so that'll stop the clock. A nice pickup on that play of about seven. Burke Holder got him out at the boundary. So if I mark the ball at the 41, clock stops with 56 seconds remaining. Yeah, that's a good way to keep those timeouts, huh? Yeah, without a doubt. Getting as many yards as you can, get out of bounds. This is where you want to keep, if you're Pandora, keep the football in front of you and keep it into play. Don't let him get out of bounds or down the seam. And Mod's going to keep it, going to go up the middle. It's going to be Fisher in there for Mod the stop as he is. Fisher Mod's carried across the 35 to the 34-yard line. Good for another Northwest Ohio Recycling first down. And quickly set up again, and Pandora Gilboa is going to call timeout. Yeah, I think they put Pandora in a situation. Pandora was going to try to sub right there at Liberty. Benton went quick. Pandora got caught with somebody going in and trying to come out at the same time and forced them to take a timeout. And it looked like, your, it looked like Liberty Benton was just going to spike the football and go to second down, unless that's what they just ended up doing when the whistle was blown. But... In any case, a timeout here on the field. 47 seconds remaining. Liberty Benton with a 21-7 lead. Of course, Pandora Gilboa uh, starting the offense. They went right down the field. A very impressive 96-yard drive and putting the first points up against Liberty Benton since September 8th. And you thought, all right, we, we, we've got something going here. But Liberty, or Liberty Benton has scored the last 21 points and have really had the momentum kind of going their way throughout the last half of the first quarter well, and the second quarter. I think the interception played a huge part because Liberty Minton took it down and scored right there, you know, and then turned around and they turned it over themselves and their defense, they relied on their defense and they've, they've really buckled down, like you said, since that opening drive for Pandora for the touchdown, Liberty Benton has been very selfish defensively. And Maude puts that one out there and almost intercepted. Laying out for that one was Morris. Lemire was the intended receiver. Good job by that young man Second extending down, and getting yeah, his hand on it, batting it down. Raindrops starting to fall here at Pandora Shh. Park. I'm just, I'm just pointing it out, Darren. I'm not causing it. <laughs> I don't even think they can see it on the camera yet. Probably not. In fact, if it wasn't for the looking at the lights, you probably wouldn't be able to tell. I don't feel anything here yet, but oh, be, there, there's something. You got to be a ruiner, don't you? <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah. Here's Mod. Mod trying to ruin Pandora Gilboa's night. Pass. Looking for Lemire and can't find him. Uh, Intended to the 12-yard line. Or at the 12-yard line. Ashton Crawford there. Lemire, the intended receiver. 
I'd rather take that back. Lane Lee in on the defense there. Yeah, one thing about it, both quarterbacks are going to have to earn it throwing the football now with this breeze. The complexion of the game has definitely changed. There's no doubt in the, the, the surroundings as well as the For sure. temperatures. And Here's third and ten. Maude looking, looking for Lemire again and just out of his reach. Broke open there at the last minute. I take that back. That was Elkert who was the intended receiver on that, Zach Elkert. And just a little too far, it's going to be fourth down, and probably you know, going to see them uh, attempt to go for it here. Yes, you know, the, the, we do have a steady rain coming now, but, uh, you know, my question is, with all the rain we've had in the past 48 hours, you know, how, you know, the field appeals appears to be in pretty good shape right now, mm -hmm. but, you know, is it going to deteriorate? Is it going to get slippery? It's, it's going to be interesting to see what happens here as we, you know, get into this second half here in a little while. For sure. And there's only been one uh, slip that we've seen out here. And we're going to have another timeout as Liberty Benton will take a timeout. We'll take it as well with 31 seconds left in the first half. We'll be back on WOSN. Fourth down and 10 for the Eagles. 31 seconds left in the first half. Mott back to pass, drops it, and almost intercepted. So turnover on downs for Liberty ball. Benton, and Pandora Go Bull will get the football back with 26 Pandora seconds remaining. And you have to wonder if they will uh, attempt to do anything or maybe just take a knee and head to half. He may throw one deep just from the standpoint he's got the wind behind him. I think it's always worth it to take a shot. Of course, I've never been intercepted either, so good point. I would say those things. Neither one uh, of us have. Yeah, that's for sure. It looks like they're just going to take a knee and head to halftime. Well, they're going to hand it off. And Burkholder against the line is going to get pushed out to the 35-yard line. To the and that's about it. And I would say that's going to be it for this first Half of action, indeed it will. Halftime here at Pandora Park. It's a 21-7 lead for Liberty Benton. We're back with the third quarter when we come back here on WOSN. Welcome back. Halftime wrapping up here at Pandora Park as we are ready for football action to commence the Rain still coming down lightly, but you know, if you're sitting in it for 45 minutes, it doesn't feel so light after a while. And actually at halftime, there was a pretty significant exodus of the fan base that uh, decided to go do something else for the rest of the uh, rest of the night. But we are here broadcasting uh, from Pandora Park. Patrick Hamler, Darren Gilbert here with you. 21-7 Liberty Benton on top of Pandora Gilboa. And it was an early start for Pandora Gilboa. They went up 7-0. Liberty Benton scored the last 21 points, and now the Rockets will get the football. And you got to think they're going to have to make something happen here if they want to keep hope alive in this second half. And this is a good return to start out, out across the 30. And that is where PG will start. Yeah, that's a nice return right there. Like you said, to start it out, that's the way you want to go if you're the home team Rockets. You know, right now the momentum is all with the visitors, the blue and white Liberty Benton Eagles. And the Pandora's just got to, you know, settle down and, and get into their groove and do what they do best. But you got to give a lot of credit that first half to Liberty Benton and their defense. The Eagles seem to make some adjustments on defense. And after that 96-yard drive by PG, they haven't had, uh, obviously, that same level of success. So we'll see what they, adjustments uh, they made on offense here at halftime. We'll start with a quick pass as Gurton connects with the short pass and takes it for a nice gain as Meyer takes it for a Northwest Ohio Recycling first down. Yeah, real high percentage, little pitch and catch out to the flat near us. Nice first down there, good start there by the... Seen it there on the Finley Truck and RV instant replays. Fresh set of downs. 
And now Gurton with the handoff to Burkholder. Holder with a nice spin move and making guys miss. Another nice spin move as he's going to get the pile pushed ahead and then it goes back. We'll see where they eventually, they're going to down and give him all the progress. So that will be at the 43-yard line. Another Northwest Ohio Recycling first down. So a great start for the Rockets so far. Sure was. They're coming out with a little uh, extra hop in their step right here offensively. I'll tell you, he almost broke it on the second spin move. If he'd have done that, he'd have been in the clear. He'd have probably found his way to the end zone. In plus territory now, ball on the 43, first and 10. Play action, Gurton rolling out, looking, pass complete at the 35 and down at the 31 yard line. Good for another Northwest Ohio recycling first down as making the completion there, Aiden Morris. Roberts on the stop. And this is the way Gurton played. I mean, he got in, got on a little roll and, you know, when you give the kid a little confidence and let him get his feet set, McComb had a struggle, you know, getting to him. And, he, you know, he had a clean jersey. And if they don't put pressure on him, he's he got the ability to throw it and throw it at a high percentage. Miller up the middle to the 25. And that's something we didn't see a ton of in the first half. And it seemed like when we did see it, they had some success with it, but just kind of went away from that to try some other things. And so far, the play calling has been top notch. Yeah, now they're getting him out of the pocket and letting him roll around a little bit. And letting the receivers find those seams and those gaps and they're they're chunking yards right you know right now here in this early third quarter Burkholder and Miller with Gurton in the backfield and the ball way back there Gurton with some trouble with the snap and falls on it way back at the 39 yard line yeah that's a tough break right there but the young man did the right thing he didn't try to pick it up he just jumped on the football Swallow the minus yardage there, but you're keeping the football. So that will be a loss of 10. We'll make it third down and 17. I don't know if the snap was so bad. I think it was one of those he just, you know, took his eye off the football. And I think you're right. It might have just gone through his hands. Pass coming out, puts it up, and incomplete. Was looking for Morris there at the 30 yard line, or at least he was the guy closest to the football. And that's gonna bring up fourth down. Yeah, Liberty really fortunate right there. They could have got called right there for a defensive hold or a pass interference. But I think they thought the pass, you know, was not that close to the receiver to, to warrant that flag apparently. So fourth and 17, let's go for it. That was gonna be a pooch punt. And a fair catch at the 15 yard line. Fair catch. But they snapped that ball pretty fast. I was about to say it could just be setting up for a short little punt just to get a little advantage in field position. But in any case, it's now Liberty Benton's football with 9.16 remaining in the third quarter. Yeah, I think that's one Seth uh, Elkert would like to have back. I don't think he realized he had that much running room in front of him. But he did the smart thing and the high percentage and just Made a fair catch there at the 15 yard line. So now the Eagles with the football, first and 10. On the 15, this is their first possession of the second half. And Elkert with the carry, but not getting Elkert much of anything, maybe a yard and that's all. Fisher on the stop. Good job by Fisher and Miller. Cobb also in there helping out for the Rockets. Good pressure and penetration there against the Eagle offensive line. The offensive lines have done a pretty solid job so far. Here's second down. This is Maude going to keep go up the middle out to the 20, and that is going to be all as the officials will blow the play dead with Morris getting credit for the tackle. It'll be third down. Yeah, this is where Pandora's really got to Buckle down defensively. They've got him in a third and five situation. And we saw what happened in the first half. Liberty Benton, first and second downs, was getting at will five and six yards at a crack. So big possession right here for the home team. Third and four. 
Man in motion. Mod with the keeper and not fooled this time by it was Pandora Gilboa as the stop is made. With the carry. I think Miller in there on the tackle and that'll be fourth down. Good job defensively. I wanted to say scarlet and gray, but I'm not so sure <laughs> what they're red, red and gray. I would apparently is their school colors. Yeah, yep, red, gray, and white. Nevertheless, what a great job defensively. Nice stand there for the Rockets. Eagles forced to punt, and that one is not going to be fielded. It's going to take an eagle bounce and roll all the way down to the 31-yard line. So that would add about 10 yards onto the end of that punt. And it could have been worse. I mean, it could have been a bounce. It could have went another 15, 20 yards. Pandora caught a break there because the ball went sideways. So after one drive from each school, no points put on the board. So now Pandora Gilboa with a chance First with the football again. Yeah, they, they attacked Liberty Benton and got some yardage. It's unfortunate they had that Long snap, get away. So that, well, uh, that drive was clicking until then. Now here's Miller working that right side Miller out to the 38 yard line. Good job by Fisher there on the kick out block. Barber, the tackle. Getting Miller about five to six yards right there on that carry. The Barber and Jared Worth in on the stop second for Liberty Benton. Four. They'll bring up second down and four. Gurdon with three in the backfield, handoff to Burkholder. And Burkholder pushed the pile across the 40 to the 41. That'll be third down and about three. Actually, they're gonna mark him at the 42. So it'll be a third down and one coming up for PG. Here's a handoff. Going on that, that side, Northwest Ohio recycling. First down as Morris takes it out to the 50. Going right behind the big, the big fella, the big running back, Miller, the junior, leading the way, allowing his teammate to get it to midfield for a rocket first down. So the ball at midfield. Fresh set of sticks for the Rockets. Here's the handoff to Miller working that side and not getting much of anything there. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Berkemeyer on the stop. A couple physical number 34s on both ball clubs right there meeting. For sure. Berkemeyer, one of the anchors there in the middle of the defense for Liberty Benton. We've called his name a number of times here tonight. Officially a gain of one, you're second and nine. Gurdon back to pass, has time, pass complete across the 40 to the 38 yard line. Pretty pitch and catch right there. Bringing that one in, that was Stahl. Now take that back, that was number two, Chase Meyer. Good call, partner. That's good for a Northwest Ohio recycling first down. And Pandora Gilboa on the move once again. Here is Morris off tackle across the 35 to the 34 yard line. So whatever they figured out at halftime that Pandora Gilboa did on offense, it is, it is working. They are moving the ball against this Eagle defense here in the second half. Yeah, they're being successful with the football both in the air and, and on the ground. Now they just got to come, come away with some points. You know, remember that last possession if it hadn't been for the bad snap putting them in that third and long situation. They were driving the ball with some success right down the field on Liberty Benton. Here's second down and six. Gurton back to pass. Going her side and double covered. And Morris fell down and no flag on the play that I can see. Yeah, I don't know if he got tied up with a defender or slipped. You know, the field's really holding up right now with you know the moisture we've had so far. It appears the kids aren't slipping. Yeah, the only slip that I can remember seeing happened in the first half before we really started getting the rain. So the field here at Pandora Park holding up really well. Third and six. Here's Burkholder going off that left side. 
And a little bit of space, but not much. Picks up about two or three, and that's going to bring up another fourth down. Yeah, Coach Hershey's happy with just lining up hat for hat and trying to win the line of scrimmage. Good job by the visiting Eagles there holding their ground, putting them in a fourth and what, fourth and a long three situation, it appears. Yeah, I think you're right, partner. Maybe four. They're going to spot the ball. The ball is spotted at the 32. They have to get to the 29, so now really close to the 20, between the 28 and the 29. They're going to say fourth and four for the Rockets, and I think this will be an attempt to go for it, maybe even to draw them offside. Nope, they're going to go for it. Girton, back to pass, quick pass, complete, across the 25, and good for a Northwest Ohio recycling first down as Carson Meyer takes the ball across the 25 to the 24. Good job there by Morris, blocking his defender along with Isaac Stahl, getting just enough for that first down on that little dump off pass here in the flat. 3.32 remaining on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard. Liberty Benton up 21 to seven, but PG looking to close the gap. Gurton back to pass, looking, end zone, overthrow him. Incomplete, looking for Chase Meyer there in the corner. Yeah, heck of an effort by that young man, stretching out, trying to get as long as he could to try to bring that thing in. So a lot of near misses on the field. And now here's Gurton with the handoff. Morris cutting back inside and picked up about a yard or two. And that's going to bring up third down. Yeah, Barbera here on this far side did a really good job turning him back inside. He wanted to bounce it out to the perimeter, but a good job here on this near side defensive end, number 81, turning that thing back into the middle to his teammates. As a look at the Finley Truck and RV instant replay, now third down and eight, ball to 23. Play action, looking across the middle and intercepted, what a catch! There across the middle, Zach Elkert using one hand to slap it and control it and then brings it down at the 15. And what a play on defense by Zach Elkert. Well, and I think that started with the pressure. I mean, that's one of those tonight that he's not seen a lot of pressure in the backfield. And it appeared to be number three that was really bearing down Jake Elkert in the backfield and made uh, the throw go a little bit quick. And but like you said, a heck of a play defensively, tipping that thing and securing it for the Eagles for a turnover. So now the Eagles will take over at their 10 yard line. Wad with the carry up the middle and he is tackled at the 13 yard line. Morris, Fish, yep. go ahead, Morris and no, Fisher Fish, on the stop. Yeah, Fisher yep. and Morris, good job. Yep, great job there partner, seeing that. 20 remaining in the third quarter and you know Pandora Gilboa putting together two really nice drives and just not able to finish that last one and finishing with a Liberty Benton turnover. Yeah they're getting like you said they're getting the yardage they just they've got to either you know just clean a couple things up and to get that thing into the end zone. Mod quick pass Gets it out to Elkert, and the ball comes out, slapped out at the 19-yard line, and the Rockets recover. Yeah, the football went on the ground, still in play. Headsy play there. Trying to see who got on the football. It appeared to be Fisher. I think you might have been right there as that ball was slapped down as he was going out of bounds. I thought maybe it would just go out of bounds with him, but Pandora Gilboa catching a break, the ball staying in bounds and recovered by PG. Yeah, somebody punched the football. I don't know if it was Burkholder, but there was two, two DBs on this right-hand side that made the initial contact and punched the football loose. Big turnover there for Liberty Benton. Pandora, you know, and, you know I ain't saying it, but they need to score in this possession. I believe you're right. In the red zone again. And here's a handoff to Miller. Miller, a couple of yards, and that's all.
Coming up on the final 90 seconds of this third quarter. 21 to seven on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard. Liberty Benton on top of Pandora Gilboa. But once again, the Rockets with another opportunity to put some points on the board here. This is their third drive of the third quarter. They've been stopped the first two times. First one kind of self-destructed. The second one ended not that long ago with a turnover. Then they forced a turnover back. And now the Rockets at second and nine going in. Pass, picked and almost intercepted. That was Anderson Roberts getting in there on the defense and probably getting a hand on it. Yeah, he put himself in a, in, in a nice defensive position right there. Appears to be, looks like equipment. So it looks like, yeah, so something up with Carson Myers equipment. The official is mentioning something with his, maybe his wrist or something with his glove, something that seems to have come apart. So that's going to have Chase Meyer come in to replace him for this third and nine. So here we go, third and nine, 102 left in the third quarter. Gurton back to pass, Myers pass complete at the 11 yard line, still on his feet, makes the guy miss the 10 into the six yard line before he is brought down, good for a Northwest Ohio recycling first down as Isaac Stahl with the catch, some yak. And that sets up first and goal for the Rockets. Yeah, that second effort definitely got him that first down. First made a great catch, second made a great move, getting away from the defender and stretched it just enough to get the first down. Gurton with the handoff to Miller. Miller cuts it back up inside for a touchdown. And we've got a ball game here at Pandora Park. 21-13, Eagles on top. Yeah, big run right there by the junior running back. Getting his line, you know, going right behind that line, finding that big seam in there between the gaps, squaring the shoulders up and taking it to the end zone. A 19-yard drive for Pandora Gilboa. And we're going to try and cut this lead to seven from the extra point. And the kick is up, and it is good. 38 seconds remaining in the third quarter. It's a 21-14 game. Here at Pandora Park, we'll be back. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Sprunger Insurance with locations in Pandora and Bluffton. Go Rockets! And tonight's instant replay, sponsored by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. Third time's the charm for Pandora Gilboa as their third drive of the third quarter nets points. And we have a ball game here at Pandora Park. We weren't sure what it was going to look like when we came out of halftime, but PG has had three really good looking drives. As we mentioned, the first two didn't end the way they wanted them to, but the third one, they got points. And this is another ball game now. Well, they've controlled the time of possession here in this third quarter. They absolutely have as Liberty Benton fields that pass, at the, fields that kick rather at the 36 yard line and that's where they'll take over. And you know, Pandora Gilboa has run, I would say probably three or four times as many plays as Liberty Benton has in this third quarter. Didn't Liberty Benton, I think they've only had one possession in the third quarter. Is that correct that I can think of? They Maybe had two? two? They had two possessions. I think the first possession was a three and out. And, and then the, the second fumble. one, the, yeah, the fumble. Well, it's a fumble. Yeah. And that, you know what? That's a turnover that turned into seven points. Yeah. Thirty-three seconds remaining in the third quarter, and now Liberty Benton with their third possession of the second half. And Mod with the handoff to Elkert. Elkert with some space over on that far side, turns it upfield at the 44-yard line, and he picks up a nice seven-yard gain. Chase Meyer chopping down Elkert there. Not after he got about nine yards, bounced it to the outside. And that may be the final play of this 
third quarter. Down to two seconds. We'll see if they get it off in time. They will not. So that is the third quarter in the books here from Pandora Park. Liberty Benton holding on to a 21 to 14 lead. We'll be back here on WOSN. Our first down sponsor tonight, Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Call 419-384-3392. Patrick Hamler, Darren Gilbert here with you from Pandora Park. Fourth quarter action, ready to get started here. Liberty Benton on top, 21 to 14, and the Eagles looking deep to begin the fourth quarter and find it at the 21 yard line for a Northwest Ohio Recycling first down. Is that Ashton Crawford? bringing that in for what I believe is his first reception of the night, and it's a big one. Yeah, they struck for one early, remember, in that second quarter on the same route. I think you're right. Just so a different receiver. Oh, uh, right. I think I think I should have one earlier anyway. Here's Elkert on first down. Out to the 20 and to the 19, and that's about it. Liberty Benton not having a lot of opportunities to run plays in the third quarter. That one dominated by PG in uh, plays and time of possession, and then Liberty Benton coming out with a quick strike here to begin the fourth. Yeah, they're going right at Pandora's DBs, especially when they go into man coverage. So the ball in the 19, second down in seven. And this is Maud on the keeper and wrecked down at the 20 yard line. Nice pursuit there is Carson Meyer comes up with the stop. Yeah, that's a big stop by that young man. Good job staying at home, getting him around the ankles and bringing him down. Putting him in a long third down situation. Third down and seven. So now third and seven coming up for the Eagles. Mod throw across the middle, pass incomplete. Had his man, looks like he was going to bring it in, and then just a nice stick by the Rocket defense, as I think that was Meyer in there on the tackle and the pass breakup, and it'll be fourth down. That's your number three right there, partner, Isaac Stahl on the that breakup. was Stahl. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank yeah, you. He got, his hat. he got his hat in there. That's a heck of a play right there because he was open on the slant. So now decision time here as Liberty Benton is going to take a timeout and talk things over how they want to do this. This fourth down and seven with 10-29 remaining. And it is one of those you know, tight situations. The, the kicker for Liberty Benton is... Garrett Nealis, 6'1", 180-pound junior. Uh, certainly an opportunity. It's not a not a chip shot field goal by any stretch, but it's not a difficult one either. Uh, and probably the decisions that they're talking about is, well, do you kick a field goal here or do you try the fourth and seven? Well, you got to remember you're kicking it into the wind. You're looking at probably, what, a 37-yard field goal? you got you got to believe seven yards at the 19, 26, 36 yards, and then you're probably pushing into a strong wind. It's probably going to add another five onto the kick. Uh, yeah, for sure. It is blowing against, or it is against the wind, so they would be kicking into that, which is certainly another consideration. I don't know what Nealis' career long or if he's had a, a ton of experience Fourth kicking down, field goals. Down, it looks like that Scott Garlock has answered that question for us. They do at least appear to be going for it on fourth and seven. Mod back to pass, looking over the middle, pass broken up, but caught anyway as Elkert stays with the tip drill and brings it in for six. Yeah, it appeared to be Carson Meyer, got his hand on the football and just couldn't bat it away. And it was, what a heads up, heady play there by number 20, as you said, Zach Elkert with the touchdown reception. You're on the Finley Truck and RV replay, and again, not necessarily the way you drew it up, but great concentration there by Zach Elkert to bring that one in in less than stellar conditions. 
and it's a 27-14 lead, and Nealis with the kick that looks like it's blocked, and no good. So the kick is blocked, and with 10.23 remaining, it's a 27-14 lead for Liberty Benton. We're back after this on WOSN. Today's premier sponsor for the Liberty Benton Eagles is Stumps Fire Protection. Stumps Fire Protection is a well-established family-owned business serving Ohio throughout since 1993. Liberty Benton getting on the scoreboard once again. Extra point, no good. 27 to 14. Liberty Benton going for it on fourth down and getting it. Zach Elkert showing some nice concentration on the batted ball to bring that one in. And Pandora Gilboa will have to answer on offense and see if they can keep their offensive momentum going that they had throughout the entire third quarter. And the ball fielded by Lee at the eight. Staying up out of the 30 yard line, 31 yard line before he is brought down. And now the Rockets will go back to work with 10-15 left in the fourth quarter. Early at with the stop there <clears throat> for the Eagles. The ball at the 31, first down and 10. Rain Pandora continuing Gilboa. to be steady here at Pandora Park. And as it will continue to possibly impact this game, here is Burkholder on first down, out to the 45, to the 48 yard line. A Northwest Ohio recycling first down and Pandora Gilboa continuing to be looking really good on offense. You know, as silly as this is going to sound, you know, Seth Elkert right there came very, very close of a horse collar and did a really good job not getting that hand behind there. Or that had been an additional 15 yards. You're absolutely right. And there are actually some people here on the PG side that were calling for it. Here is Miller, fresh set of downs. He's out across midfield to the... 48 yard line and that offensive line for Pandora Gilboa really opening some holes for these running backs to gash on the Liberty Benton Eagle defense. Yeah, unfortunately the rain's not gonna go away partner. I think it's here for the remainder of the game. So Pandora, you know, is gonna have to grind it through these conditions if they wanna get back into this game. The forecast is calling for the rain to go well, long beyond when this game will be over. There's a pass, Miller complete out across the 40 to the 35 yard line. Good for another Northwest Ohio recycling first down. A host of Eagles in on the stop there. Anderson Roberts among them on the tackle. I was gonna say Roberts number one and appeared to be Collard number two on the stop there for the Eagles, but a heck of a pitch and catch right there. Miller number one catching the football with great concentration and also just exploding his way to get as many yards as he could. Had to reach behind him and jump and catch it. Not an easy circumstance to catch a ball, certainly not in these conditions. Here's Girton going long, looking for Morris and incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, bring up second down and 10. You know, I really like Girton savvy as a quarterback. The kid's a sophomore and he's got a really nice arm and He's got a bright future in front of him to see where he's come from point A to point B from the beginning of the year to now. You know, throwing at a 61% completion clip. And here's Girton with the handoff. This is to Burkholder and nothing doing on that run. About to the 36 and that's it. We'll lose one on that play. Robertson on the stop, Jake Elkert on the stop. So third down and 11 coming up for the Rockets and a big defensive stand coming up here for Liberty Benton. And you wouldn't necessarily think that with a 13 point lead, but the Rockets have been moving the ball pretty well. Have to go get a lot here for this first down and right across the middle to Morris for the Northwest Ohio Recycling first down out to the 20 yard line and that'll move the sticks. Big catch right there by Morris coming across the middle, knowing that he's going to take a licking right there and still secure the football. Girton right on the money. 
Rockets in the red zone yet again, first and 10. This is handoff to Miller. Miller out to the 16 yard line. Looked like he might have juggled the football a little bit and secured it. And that's good for a gain of four. Barber on the stop. Ball at the 17. Berkemeyer, the tackle. Berkemeyer also in on the, another stop for the Second Eagles. Down seven. Second down and seven, ball on the 17, Girton in the gun. He's looking, left side pass complete. Out to the 14 yard line as Meyer takes it and then he's a -si do to the ground. Yep, but Roberts. Roberts to tackle. And that's gonna be very close to a first down. He third down and two. Girton in the gun again. And oh, I, I think, think they got an encroachment. I think you're absolutely right. Indeed they do. So they got the Eagles to jump on defense and that's gonna be an automatic first down, a Northwest Ohio recycling first down for Pandora Gilboa. Here to be Barbara from his outside defensive end position. Good job there with the Cadence by Curtin. First and goal at the seven. Here's Morris. Up the middle to the five, to the four, where he's brought down. I think they'll mark him down at the two. To the two yard line. Down yeah, plenty of time left in this football game. Seven minutes to go. Rockets with all their timeouts. Second and goal. And Morris at the pile, up the middle. No signal yet. Whistle blows, and I don't think he's got it. He's going to be short. Yeah, I don't see any signal yet. Preliminary indication is still in, uh, in the line of play. Yeah, and I believe he is short, so they're going to mark him just outside the goal line. And if you want to talk about four down territory, this is it. Third and goal coming up. Ball at the one foot line. Girton under center. Hands it off to Miller, and Miller is going to punch it in for the touchdown. When it's out, go ahead. Yep, going right underneath the center and the right guard. And you got it to the man that's found the end zone 14 times this year on the ground, and he just found it again. When in doubt, give it to your six foot, 210 pound junior running back and go Act from there. Actually, seven touchdowns coming in rushing will make it number eight because I'll tell you a heck of an effort, and I think he had number nine earlier tonight. Skyler Richardson to attempt the extra point, and it is up and it is good, and the Rockets. Within six, 27, 21, 622 remaining in the fourth quarter. We'll be back on WOSN. Tonight's score report sponsor is Sprunger Insurance with locations in Pandora and Bluffton. Go Rockets. The Rockets are going. Only trailing six now, 27 to 21. 21-7 lead for Liberty Benton at halftime. And the Liberty Benton Eagles able to put six points on the board, but the Rockets have countered with 14. And you really have just kind of felt that uh, the, the momentum is really in the favor of Pandora Gilboa. The Rockets have been able to really assert themselves on offense, and they've been able to come up with the stops on defense. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens, you know, from a defensive philosophy on this particular series. And the ball rolling all the way down to the 22-yard line. And that's where the Eagles will start their next drive. Yeah, because if you're Liberty Benton and you're going to rely on the arm of Maude, and he, he throws a couple incomplete passes into this wind, you know, you're putting yourself in a position to give Pandora Gilbo the football back. At 21-7 at halftime, there were some fans who were walking out and said this one was over. I don't know who they were fans of. I couldn't tell from what they were wearing, but uh, this game was definitely not over at 21-7. No, no, no. Both of these teams are very well coached, and the kids play exceptionally hard. It was going to be a slugfest. We knew that coming in, partner. 
Here's Elkert with the carry on first down to the 26, and that's all. Appeared to be Morris grabbing him by the shoelaces, bringing him down right there. Not after about three yard pickup. And Morris was there, and Meyer, I think, there at the end to clean it up. I think they'll give Meyer the credit for the tackle. So second down and seven. Under six minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Yeah, this is one where Pandora's, you know, wants to put them in a third down situation, a third and five or longer. Mon on second and seven and is going to keep it. Go around the far side across the 30, Mon out to the 34-yard line. So that'll make it a third down and two. And a official's timeout on the field as we've got a rocket that needs attention. We will step away and take a timeout as well. 5.31 remaining in the fourth quarter, 27-21. Liberty Benton on top. Welcome back. Injuries to the Pandora Gilboa defensive line, Lucas Deckard, number six, and Jake Fisher, number 79. Their defensive ends are the guys who were hurt. So on third and one, they will try and make a stand against this Liberty Benton offense, and Maud is stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Way to think, respond. I don't think he made it. I don't think he got to the, to the marker. I don't think he did either. I think he was lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. So. That'll bring up fourth down and a big fourth down for both sides. Deckard and Fisher come out for Pandora Goboa. They fourth both down. look like they have lower body injuries. We'll see if they come back okay. in. In the meantime, they got to make a stop here. Eagles need it on fourth and one. Trying to get him to jump is Maud. And the crowd making some noise, and we're going to have a timeout. So the Eagles timeout, will take their first timeout. I'm sorry, their second timeout. Yeah, really good deep discipline defensively there by Pandora as the game plan from Coach Garlock was trying to draw them offside to get them in the neutral zone, but real disciplined football there by the Rockets maintaining their composure and so it looks like at least judging by trying to draw them off sides and taking the timeout that it looks like Liberty Benton's probably going to punt it looks like the Eagles are in punting formation. Punt formation so they're going to try and rely on their defense to try and slow down this rocket attack that quite frankly with a couple of miscues in the third quarter have been able to move the ball just about at will And there's a the kick, oh, and, and it shanked. is shanked. Couldn't tell if maybe there was a rocket who maybe got on it. I couldn't tell from this angle. There but was good case, pressure. There was really yeah. good pressure on him, but I think it went off the side of his foot. And this is where the weather conditions are playing a huge part. It's getting wet. The football's wet. And I think he just caught it off the side of his foot. So the ball at the 36-yard line in Pandora Gilboa End business with a short field and 439 remaining. Can the Rockets capitalize? Or will the Eagles stiffen up on defense? Girton with a handoff to Miller, going off. Tackle, left side, out to the 31 yard line. Miller, the ball carrier, to the 31. And this is what he does, and he does best. He just gets his shoulder square to the line of scrimmage, and he lunges forward and uses his strength in his lower body and gets as many yards as he possibly can. That's a big gain right there by that young man. Expect a heavy dose of Miller and Burkholder and Morris, too. Morris stopped behind the line as Liberty Benton coming up with a big stop on defense for a loss of one. That'll bring up third down in the seventh. Yeah, that sure was. Con Connor, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm trying to see who that was. It appeared to be number 15. It looked like Austin Collard on the stop right there. Good job on the penetration and the stop by the Eagles. Third and seven. Morris in motion. Gurton fakes the handoff. Looks back to pass. Has Morris. Has him. Touchdown. Pandora Gilboa. Look like Burkholder. Ben Burkholder breaks free. 
for a 33-yard touchdown. And we are tied at Pandora Park. And they got the matchup they wanted. They got him on a linebacker. And the running back got behind the linebacker. What a nice pitch and catch. Gert with a nice touch pass over the top of the linebacker in stride on that solid vertical route for the touchdown. The Rockets, extra point away from taking the lead for the first time since the first quarter. Kick is up, and it is good. 28-27, the Rockets have vaulted back into the lead. 3.32 remaining in the fourth quarter. Now, can the Eagles come up with an answer? We'll be back after this on WOSN. Welcome back, 3.32 left in the fourth quarter. Pandora Gilboa, much like the rain that is encroaching upon us here at Pandora Park, has encroached upon the 21-7 Liberty Benton lead and now have retaken the lead, 28-27 with 3.32 remaining, but still plenty of time left. Liberty Benton has a lot of weapons out there. One timeout remaining, and we are ready for a thrilling finish here on WOSN. Ball field at the 18, and they're going to say his knee was down, so Lee is not going to get an opportunity. Or, I'm sorry, Crawford not going to get an opportunity to return it. And they'll say he was down at the 16-yard line. Yeah, more importantly, partner, they've got one timeout left. Yeah. You know, that's, that's big. Two, they're going into a driving rain, and number three, the wind is playing a factor. A lot of time left, though. 3:31 is tons of minutes and seconds for some confusion team to score. on the Rockets' defense, and they're going to call timeout. Timeout, Pandora Gilboa. Said Pandora Gilboa was not lined up correctly at all. Probably something to do with the fact that uh, Fisher and Deckard are not in the game right now. Yeah, this is the not the type of rain we had in the first half. This is almost turning into a driving rain. Yeah. Yeah, the rain has without a doubt picked up. Well, and you got to believe it's going to start taking its toll on the footing on the field. It has been consistent for, well, the rain started around the second quarter, about uh, three quarters way through the second quarter. And that was about an hour and a half ago in real time. And it's been raining ever since. In fact, it's been uh, nothing but intensifying. So you got to think the, the passing game is going to be affected. As you mentioned, footwork and uh, field position is going to be affected. And uh, these are the type of conditions where if you're on defense, you, you've got something of an advantage against the offense. But we'll see what the Eagles can do here. Ball in the 17, first and 10. Maud back to pass. Going for it on first down and almost caught. I think it went right through Elkert's hands. hands. Didn't he? Yeah, I think it went right through his hands. Incomplete pass covered by Meyer. And credit to Liberty Benton not having any fear whatsoever with putting the ball in the air and going long. And that was right on the money. Elkert just couldn't bring it in. Yeah, that was a nice pass there by Mod. Stride for stride was running side by side right there. It was Meyer for Pandora Gilboa. Now second down, five wide. Little Mod, bubble screen. Pass. And right there, the Rockets not fooled by it. That's a formation they've actually seen Mod run out of quite a bit tonight. Elkert, Instead, he passes it. I think that was either Elkert or Crawford that was the receiver on that play. Yeah, Miller stayed at home, made a great play from the linebacker spot right here, making the solo tackle. Third and 11. Rocket fans coming alive. Mod has time, looks across the middle, pass complete at the 31 yard line. Good for a Northwest Ohio recycling first down. That was brought in by Seth Elkert. Big pitch and catch right there. Burkholder on the stop. 2.44 remaining. Fresh set of downs. Here's Mod on the carry. Going up the middle to the 40 to the 42 yard line. Going to be very close. And they're going to give him a Northwest Ohio Recycling first down. 
So the clock will stop while they reset the chains. Then it will restart on the official's whistle. Yeah, and that's where you got to be careful if you're Pandora Gilboa. His ability to run the football, he's dangerous. Mod back to pass again, short pass. Complete to Elkert at the 46 yard line. He did get out of bounds on that, on that far boundary. So that will stop the clock with 2.17 remaining. Elkert with the reception. And it's really coming down now. Oh, Hardy fans on both sides. No one has left since halftime. They are here for, well, the duration. Unless something gets really crazy, we're not going to have overtime in this one tonight. Mod back to pass, second and four. Has time, going long, looking, has a man. Oh, he's he's gone. Touchdown, Liberty Benton. Fly, Eagles, fly. The touchdown puts the Eagles back on top. Little hitch and go action right there. He got free in the secondary. Missed tackle, found his way to the end zone. And now the decision here, I would imagine you go for two and try and give yourself a seven-point lead. 33-28. What a play by Liberty Benton. Mod, backfield, is going to keep it, goes there, reaches for the two-point conversion, and does not get it, I don't think. Yeah, I think he was tripped up, and he's short of the the line. He's not giving it to him, this no. far side. He's the short. So he is short. So the Eagles with a big-time strike as Maud finds Elkert running down the sideline. And they've had that play a couple times. They've, they've, they've hit a couple, they've missed a couple, but that time that play worked to absolute perfection. The left side's been good to him tonight. It really has. Tell you what, win or lose, gutsy effort by both ball clubs. Yeah. Gutsy. Without a shadow of a doubt, and it's, it's a shame that, you know, I suppose there is a possibility for a tie in the BVC. But you, you really you watch a game like this and you think both teams deserve to win. No one really deserves to lose a game like this, but that's, that's just the nature of sports competition is someone is going to come out on the short end of the score here tonight. Sure. But both teams have done just a terrific job navigating problems, injuries, the elements. You know, it's raining on the field for both sides. Well, look at it this way. You know, if, if Pandora should happen to drop this game tonight, that gives them one league loss. They they went out. They're guaranteed, a sh you know, part of the conference. Liberty Benton, if they win tonight, that puts themselves in a position, you know, having to play Macomb in week 10, you know, anything can happen. We could end up with a three-way tie. Liberty Benton could win it outright with a win against Macomb. Pandora could come back in this final two minutes. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens. Let, let, let's see the thing play out. Five-point lead for the Eagles. And now the Rockets will put their offense back on, which has done a tremendous job here in the second half. Ball fielded by Lee at the 10 and dropped at the 20-yard line. Big stop by Roberts right there. He's done a really good job in special teams tonight, closing in on the football. So 2.02 left in the fourth quarter. It's a five-point Liberty Benton lead, 33-28. Rockets with the football. They have two timeouts remaining. And if you give Girton time, he's, he, you know, he has the ability to pick you apart. Ball the line. But then again, the you, know, you can't let the receivers get free either because he's got a heck of an arm. And a swing pass gets it out to Miller. Miller with space down at the 40-yard line. And good for Northwest Ohio recycling first down. Down the 42-yard line, the clock will stop due to the first down. Little pitch and catch out in the flat. Got some great blocking from his receiver. Big game there for Pandora Gilboa. Definitely the way they wanted to start this drive. Now the clock will start, 154 left. Girton drops back again, has time, pass. Complete there at the 45-yard line, and the 
Player wisely getting out of bounds as Chase Meyer. Had he played by that young man. Picked up about two yards, but maybe more importantly on that particular play, got out of bounds to stop the clock. Yeah, didn't have to burn a timeout, did he? Good job yep. there. Because initially he was trapped and he, he broke away from it, dove to, to the sideline and got out of bounds at the boundary. Not much of a game, but smart, heady player. Saved probably a good 15 seconds, 20 seconds on the clock. Here's Gurton back to pass, going across the middle, pass incomplete at the 40-yard line, and good defense there. That pass intended for Meyer. Yeah, I think Elkert got his hand in there and ripped it away. The conditions are going to make. It was really a well-thrown ball. Yes, it was. Just a, a great defensive play getting that hand in there. And the conditions are going to make uh, handling the ball and keeping all that stuff a, uh, a lot harder. And an example of that right there is the officials' quick timeout to get a drier football. And we'll get going again in third and eight. Here's Gurton. Pass, slant, complete. Dropped at the 50-yard line. It's going to be short of the first down is Meyer. Big hit by Roberts right there. I'll tell you, heck of a catch because he took a shot. Nice job to hang on to the football, and now here it is, fourth and two. Fourth down and two. Rockets with their last chance. Girton in the gun, hands off to Miller, right up the middle for a first down. And out to the 44-yard line of Northwest Ohio, recycling first down, and that keeps the drive alive for the Rockets. The big fella took it right up the gut, just got as many yards as he could, got the first down. Rockets drive continues. Down to a minute. Here's Gurton. Back to pass. Looking long. Incomplete. Looking for Morris here on the near side. And you know, a lot of those particular plays, Liberty Benton's had them pretty well covered. You've seen two or three guys out there on those on those longer pass well, plays. Well, especially on Morris. I mean, he's the yeah. leading receiver, and he's also got what we say 14 touchdowns coming in tonight. So they start sending two and three at him. Somebody's going to get a, a situation where it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one opportunity if you're the Rockets. A lot of our notes are no longer paper at the molecular level. So we're doing a lot of this by uh, rote at this point. Ball at the 44, second and 10. Less than a minute to go. Gurton with time. Pass slant complete. 39-yard line, going to be short of the first down. Brings up third down and one as Meyer brings it in. And PG's going to take a timeout. That's their second. We will take a timeout as well. 46 seconds remaining. It's a five-point lead for the Eagles and the Rockets. Come back right after this on WOSN. Back to action here on WOSN. Third down and four. Handoff, Burkholder looking to pass. Loses his footing and throws it up and it's intercepted by Liberty Benton and that's gonna do it. A trick play giving it to Burkholder and as he went to throw the pass, his foot slipped. You gotta believe that impacted the throw and where he wanted to go with it and after that, it was just a matter of coming down with it, and that's what Liberty Benton did. Yeah, they tried to go, you know, to, to a halfback pass there and get it to an athlete, to an athlete, and like you said, Burke Holder just come over to the sideline, said his foot slipped out from underneath him. You could tell that he did that with his foot to, to show the coach, but, yeah, like you said, it did slip, and he, did, he couldn't get anything on it, and the ball was intercepted. So the Eagles with the football back with a five-point lead, and they'll run one play, and PG might use their timeout. They're going to kneel it here, and if the Rockets don't use their timeout, yeah, which they will, they'll, they'll go ahead and use their last timeout. And then that will do it. Well, my memory serves me correctly. I think Pandora's got Riverdale next week. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Liberty Elmwood. Benton. 
They got Elmwood and Riverdale their last two games. Okay. I can tell you that much. Okay. Yeah. And then I believe Liberty Benton has Arcadia. Arcadia and then Macomb. And then Macomb. Yes. So Liberty Benton with the win here tonight. And that puts them in the driver's seat for the BVC. If they can defeat Macomb at week 10 and they don't lose anywhere else. Correct. You're going to look at a... Liberty Benton. Soul Championship. The Soul Championship, that's correct. If McComb should happen to upset them or they should happen to lose next week, then you're looking at possibly a three-way tie if Pandora right. can take care of business the next two weeks. And that'll do it from Pandora Park and an instant classic here on WOSN as the Eagles come into Pandora and take one from the Rockets. Final score in this one, 33-28. I want to thank Megan Sherrick and Cassidy Driscoll for helping us out with the sound and audio in this one as the Liberty Benton Eagles in a rainy victory come away with the win here tonight. That is going to do it for our broadcast here for all of us at WSN. I'm Darren Gilbert. I'm Patrick Campbell saying so long, everyone, from Pandora. <laughs>